So you want to build a sleeper PC. Well, I've tackled this quite a few times. Maybe you've seen my video on the 2001 sleeper PC build back there. Uh, there, there are a few things that uh, I came across that I kind of found challenging that maybe uh, would have been helpful to know beforehand, uh, but uh, it was always a really fun experience and I'm kind of excited to go through and uh, show off some of the things that I, that I learned as I've uh, built these computers and worked with these older cases uh, that hopefully you won't have to make the same mistakes essentially and um, uh, there really are just a few uh, big picture items uh, related to the cases themselves. I'm not really going to go into uh, details on, you know, what what you should put inside them and so forth, because uh, that's that's entirely up to you. The the big thing is being able to get modern components uh, into an old case in the first place, and that that is the big hurdle. And that is essentially what I want to talk about in this video. So with that said, um, there, there are essentially uh, three, three big things that, that I would mention here. Uh, the first one being, you know, you need to think about whether you want to uh, use an ATX or an AT style case because those are, are quite different. Um, uh, another thing to consider would be the airflow uh, of the case. Uh, it almost certainly going to be a challenge uh, with these older cases and you have to kind of consider whether you want to go down the road of uh, you know getting your Dremel out and, and creating your own um, air vents uh, in that case or, or whether you're going to have to be more selective and find a case with with decent airflow which is kind of hard actually for, for older cases. Um, the third big thing is uh, consider the dimensions of the case and just how the whole thing uh, essentially fits together um, because uh, you know some some cases you know are the lift off variety and they attach in a certain way and then you have others that where the, the the side panel comes off and some are much more easy to use essentially than, than others so that is something to consider and something I wish I had considered uh, before I got started on a few of these projects. So let's start off by taking a look at the difference between an ATX and an AT style case. So this is really among the most critical decisions you'll, you'll make up front. So I've got a diagram here showing uh, ATX versus AT style cases. And uh, the AT style case was replaced around the mid 90s really with ATX style cases because of changes in the motherboard, the fact they had a lot more uh, onboard devices, audio and video and so forth. Um, so some of the major differences is that uh, on the ATX style case, uh, you've got that vertical box. Um, that's where, again, that the input output, uh, your USB ports, um, you know, the, the uh, onboard audio and video uh, come through the case, of course, at that location. Then underneath that, you've got your expansion port slots. And then on AT style case, uh, you basically had just a hole in that location for your AT style keyboard, maybe some holes for, for serial and parallel ports for your, your mouse and printer and so forth, and the slots underneath those. But those two cases are not at all... Uh, equivalent and you can't simply take an ATX style motherboard and plop it in an AT style case. So I've got a couple of cases here again uh, AT on the right ATX on the left and I'll go ahead and turn these around so you can see what the backs look like So I'm actually going to assume for a moment that uh, you go with the ATX case rather than the AT case. And we will come back to the AT case, but the AT case is uh, noticeably more challenging uh, to deal with. There is kind of an easy way to handle certain AT cases to get them in, into a form that's compatible with modern motherboards. But in general, if you want to go uh, the, the easier route, by far in most cases, uh, go with go with a, a vintage ATX case like this one. All right, with the AT case put to the side for now, uh, let's focus here on the uh, ATX case. And 
what you'll notice back here is that this particular case has uh, four expansion slots, which is not a lot. Um, and in fact, when you're looking at cases, you really want to pay attention to uh, how many slots it has back here. Generally, if it has less than about six, so you know, five, four on down, um, it's not going to accommodate a full ATX motherboard. Uh, the largest motherboard you're going to be able to fit in this case, for example, I'll show it the front again, uh, this old IBM Aptiva um, is in fact a uh, micro ATX motherboard. And another thing I'll point out, I'm going to open this up, I, I took the screws out here and you'll notice that the, the side just kind of slides off like this. And th this is actually a pretty important detail that um, with this particular case, this type of case, uh, you only need to take off the side panel to get inside of it. Uh, a number of cases actually require you to take the whole uh, top section of the case off. And I've got an example here for you. So this is, this is also um, an ATX style case. Uh, this one on your left is uh, quite a bit larger. Uh, that can, you can easily see that here. Uh, it has was that seven uh, expansion slots here? So this one actually is large enough, it's a mid-tower case. Uh, it is large enough to accommodate a full-size ATX motherboard, which is, which is nice. Uh, if, it can, if it can hold a full-size ATX motherboard, that means it can also fit a, a micro ATX, and should be able to fit a mini uh, ITX as well. By the way, a mini ITX should be able to fit in this one since it's large enough for a micro ATX motherboard. But what you'll notice about this one, the major downside is uh, th the way that the uh, case actually fits on here, uh, that you actually have to lift all this off and as one piece, uh, which is, I'll be perfectly honest, I've, I've made a number of sleepers I'll show you here uh, soon that, that have this exact configuration because this is typically um, the way AT style cases work as well as some of these older ATX style cases. And uh, some are much better than others as far as, you know, their, uh, their ease of use. But, um, man, this one, this one in particular is a pain, uh, which is too bad because... I'll show you the front here. The front I rather like on this uh, case. And I really like the, how this is kind of... Uh, trans translucent here, this kind of smoky translucent look is something I'm, I'm very attracted to. But um, it's got you know enough room for expansions. Pretty good airflow as well in this case. We can compare it to this one. This has some airflow through here, uh, but uh, this is quite nice. Uh, the one major downside is is actually that that top, the fact that you have to take it all off. You know, and if you're if you're one of the people like me that's constantly going in the computer making small changes and upgrades, then uh, you might think twice about getting a case where you have to lift off the entire top, and instead go with something like this where the side panel lifts off. But I'm glad I thought about uh, this front grid because you do very much want to consider. Um, the airflow in the case. And both of these look like they have pretty decent airflow. You will want to actually look inside here, and I've actually got a 120 millimeter uh, fan installed in there. And uh, see that, that the air can actually get through uh, the front of the case that it's you know you don't just have a hole in the plastic but no hole in the the, the metallic case and uh, it also it's also really nice if you do have a rear uh, space here for a fan uh, even if it's a small one it helps with airflow so you do want to make sure that you've got you know enough airflow front to back here and it's really helpful you know, if you have enough, at least enough room for a 120 millimeter fan uh, up front there. So um, I can't tell you that even with 
a fan in the back and room for a 120 millimeter fan in the front and what seems to be pretty good uh, access to fresh air in the front. Uh, it can still be a challenge to keep these old cases cool because of course in modern cases what you'll have is um, also you know a, um, a hole up here at top and, and maybe even one here in the side to let out some heat. So uh, in either case you might at least be considering uh, getting out your Dremel and actually cutting a hole and I have an example here back with my 2001 sleeper PC where I did that. In fact I did it with another sleeper PC I have here that I'll show you in a moment. Um, so you want to uh, maximize airflow especially if you're not if you're not interested in cutting holes in your computer and that's perfectly understandable. I wouldn't necessarily want to cut a hole in this one either because I really like the way that it is. I wouldn't want to mess that up and this is plastic up here instead of solid metal which I don't really want to cut. Um, is making sure that uh, the video card that you do have is a blower style. right? So it has one fan and it blows the air out the back rather than through the side. And I think that's a really important detail. If you aren't willing to cut a hole in the side of, of your case to let that heat out, I wouldn't recommend getting you know, one of those dual or triple fan cards where it blows the air out of the side rather than out the back. Um, another thing that I'll mention here is that, and this one, the, the case on the right, the IBM is a bit thinner than this one. Um, it's not as, well, I should say it's not as wide um, as the Cybermax case here. But both of these are, in fact, not as wide as your average modern case. In fact, a lot of these older cases are only about seven inches wide. So in terms of, you know, your internal com components, not only do I recommend getting a blower you know, graphics card, I recommend getting a low profile uh, CPU cooler um, and that way it isn't touching, isn't rubbing up against uh, the, uh, you know, the side of your case. So you don't want that. But otherwise, um, the ATX, the, the vintage ATX cases, you know, w whether you go with a smaller one like this that can only handle micro ATX, or a full-size one that can handle a full-size ATX motherboard um, shouldn't be all that difficult to modify. It's just largely a matter of making sure there's enough airflow and um, you know, considering either getting a blower style graphics card um, or uh, consider possibly cutting a hole in the top and the side. Now, if you are anything like me, uh, ATX style cases, some of the vintage ones, are, are quite nice, um, but you cannot beat an AT style case. These are older cases, they have more of a vintage look to them, and um, this is why I have here with my HAL 9000 uh, modified AT uh, case, and it was just a regular AT style case, but I had to make some extensive modifications in order to get a modern system to work. So if you do pick an AT case to work with, you, you kind of have two options. And I can tell you that if you go with a smaller case like this, you know, you're gonna be limited in size to basically a micro ATX or an ITX motherboard. So you're not gonna be able to fit a full size uh, ATX case in here. You will almost certainly want to put holes uh, in, in the case and I put one in the side here to let again vent out the graphics card the heat from the graphics card and then I put one uh, up on top uh, if you can see it there um, to, uh, to vent the uh, power unit and just the overall case as hot air rises up through it. Now the biggest thing is going to be with the back. So what I did in this case is actually take off, I'm gonna take off this top here. So what I did is actually remove uh, the almost, this, this entire area here basically was uh, just a regular AT back, backing so it had a hole here for the keyboard and everything then slots down here, removed it, cut out a back of an ATX case, a new modern case, 
Uh, it was cheap, got for about $30 on Amazon. Uh, aluminum, cut it out, painted it, attached it via bolts uh, onto the, the main case. And it fit in there quite well. Um, in fact, I also kept also kept the the um, the other side the panel here that the motherboard actually attaches to I attach that to the old AT uh, steel panel back here so that it's nice and fixed it's not going to go anywhere um, but this has the holes that will accommodate a modern uh, micro ATX motherboard which is what I've got in there but that's essentially I you're almost certainly going to have to do this if you get a small case. However, there is an alternative and there's a way to do this a little easier without doing all of this modification. And for that, um, you will want to consider a full size, full tower uh, AT ATX case. So that's what I did with this big guy here. And what I did was I found two cases that were both full size, uh, full tower cases on eBay. And this front was on an AT style case, like the one I sh I'm showing here off of eBay. Uh, and I found another case that was the same size uh, that was ATX. And if you go look on eBay like I have here, uh, you can find other cases that basically match up. An AT style case where you take the front off like this and um, an uh, ATX style uh, case. So you can actually take the front off an AT case and if it's the same dimensions, it should fit on a full tower uh, ATX case. Now there aren't that many on, on eBay, but I have seen some. And that's where I got this one. So the only thing from the original AT style case is in fact the front. Everything else about the case is that uh, vintage ATX case. So when I turn it around, what you'll see is really just a modern uh, ATX style uh, case. And, and it is. Um, it's just that the front panel is from that, that old AT style case. So that's um, a thing that you can do now. What I, will, what I will say is make sure that the dimensions are the same. I find that for these full uh, size towers, if, it, if you have two towers that have the same number of five and a quarter inch slots, let's say five or six or whatever it is, then they're generally the same size. Um, and you can simply switch out that front panel, uh, should work. So um, another a really nice thing, I mean, these are obviously really huge cases and not everyone's gonna have room for them, but one thing that's really nice is that thermally speaking, um, there's plenty of room for heat to kind of dissipate in this case and it just rises up through here and exits um, out this uh, fan up here, I got 120. Uh, millimeter fan up here. I've got a couple, I think these are 40 or 50 millimeter fans or something like that here. And I just leave these open back here. And that's, it's really quite enough to get the, the uh, air flowing through it and get the heat out of the case. So these are, even though they do take up quite a bit of room, they look, you know, obviously really cool and they stay relatively cool because they're such a large, they have such a large internal capacity um, for air, for, for heat to rise and leave the case. And then just, um, you know, the solid metal construction and so forth is, is really quite nice. Now I did, I'll make another video about this particular sleeper build because I'm quite happy with the way this one turned out as well. But uh, I did actually put in this window. This window was original and I ended up putting in this window here. Um, but uh, one, one downside with this specific case is that it doesn't have a whole lot of, of openings up front here for uh, that horizontal airflow front to back. So it's a little bit of a downside with this one, but uh, you know, I just couldn't pass up on it. I just, I knew right away that, that I wanted to make a sleeper out of this one. And again, if you go with a full size a AT uh, case, you, you should be able to find ATX full-size ATX case that will match it and you can simply take the front off and use that which is a lot easier obviously 
than going the other route and actually cutting out you know the back and side of an ATX case and putting it into an AT uh, case. So those are those are some of the big things um, that uh, I would consider you know when putting together a sleeper build. In terms of the internals, again, uh, really the only thing I can say is is make sure that you have room. Uh, a lot of these cases, they're they might be really big overall, like this one is, but it's not necessarily uh, very. Uh, deep front to back and it's not very wide either from side to side so that's not something until like didn't come until uh, quite a few years later that they started making more room for better cable management and so forth and larger heat sinks they really weren't thinking about you know these giant heat sinks or you know water cooling or anything like that so you don't have room for radiators or, or anything like that so you really have to take that into consideration the size of your internals components um, and the size of the case itself. So if you're gonna buy a case off of Amazon or uh, eBay, uh, I would be very careful of the overall size of the case and make sure that's gonna work with um, whatever components you plan on putting in there. That, that is the number one thing that I would say. Uh, and again, you know, if you don't want to do a lot of customization, uh, going with just an a uh, vintage ATX style case is probably the way to go. And uh, I would personally, you know, doing it again, um, go after a case where the side panel comes off rather than having to lift the whole thing off uh, makes that much easier. Now, another thing you'll want to consider when putting together your sleeper is the power button. And what you'll find on old AT style cases is that the buttons are. Uh, they, they will push in all the way and uh, they won't pop back out like a standard momentary switch that you have on a modern computer uh, because when you press it in that means it's on and then you'll have to uh, press it again in order to turn the computer off. So um, what you can do is switch that out like I did here with the momentary switch and this one has an LED light on it. Um, one option is simply switching these out. Um, but if you do want to leave the old power button on there and simply not use it, a good option would be to use the reset button. Because the reset button, even on these older cases, the AT style cases, was a momentary, or is a momentary switch, I, I should say. So you can always use that um, instead. And one of the things I did that I point out in my other video with the 2001 sleeper build is um, put out, actually put a USB port in where the button for the three and a half inch drive is. So there is no actual three and a half inch drive in, in here and instead it's been replaced by a flash drive. And there's a lot of different things that you can do with the former uh, drives, uh, floppy drives and so forth. I saw one, at least one person had uh, basically put in a, a flash card reader where the disk drive used to be. So there's a lot of different options for that. And I would just kind of explore, see what's out there in terms of uh, Kind of reconfigure and reusing um, the older technology for for and replacing with new technology whether it's usb or flash uh, uh, cards or whatever um, these can be repurposed i didn't actually end up doing anything with the lock but you know you can be creative i'm sure there's something that can be done with those as a switch to maybe turn on a light or uh, do something like that so I hope that was somewhat helpful um, as you get started uh, making your first sleeper PC and I uh, hope you'll come back and take a look at some of the other videos that I have planned um, looking at some of the other uh, sleepers I've produced and um, getting into a little more of the mechanics and specifics of you know, kind of retrofitting and uh, cleaning and modifying these cases. Because uh, there's a lot of things in this video that I just kind of wanted to uh, touch upon, like the dimensions of the case, types of cases, and things like that, that should get you started. But in terms of the specific tools and, you know, what, what I used uh, to, to paint the cases that I painted uh, white um, in, in case the examples that I had in this video, um, I think that I'll save that for another time and uh, we can take a look at that in a lot more detail. So uh, thank you guys very much for 
uh, tuning in, watching this video, watching my other videos, and seeing what comes out every week. I am uh, attempting to do a couple videos a week. Uh, this is a lot of fun to, to share this information, the experiences I've had uh, dealing with these old computers and games and everything like that. So please do uh, come back, subscribe if you want, like if you want, and I uh, hope to see you all uh, in the near future.